Hello violinists, welcome to lesson three. I'm Henriette and in this lesson today we're going to consolidate our bow hold, we're going to progress with our long bow strokes. So I suggest that you have already tuned your violin today. If not, please go over lesson two where it's all about tuning your violin and we're going to just start with our bow. You may remember from lesson one how we started our bow hold, so let's go over that. We're going to start with our little ring. So we have a ring between our thumb, which is bent, and our middle finger, so that your thumb is about in the middle, in your middle joint, touching the middle finger. Now we're opening a little gap here, and we're going to put the bow in there, so that your thumb is just on this wooden part. So we said your bow cries out for having your thumb there. This is not correct, but your thumb needs to be there. And then your middle finger comes opposite your thumb like this. Drop your ring finger down so that it's by the side of your middle finger. Drop your index finger down and then your little finger is on the side edge. Can you remember? Now I want you to think today about curving those fingers really nicely around the bow. So if they're sticking out like this, see if you can soften your fingers today and round them around your bow like this. If your fingers are here, that may well be the case that they've, your bow hold has changed a little bit, that's okay. Drop them over your bow like that and there you have good bow hold. So I've got my middle two fingers together I've got about a finger width space between my index finger and my middle finger. And similarly, I've got a, about a finger width space between my ring finger and my pinky. Let's promote a good bow hold by doing some bow exercises and we're going to do our waves like this. So make your wrist nice and soft. Make sure that you're not gripping the bow more tightly than you need to. Of course, when we first do this exercise, um, are, people are more likely to hold on to the bow really tightly but perhaps today you can start to relax it already a little bit there you go super now when you do this can you check that your right shoulder is in its lowest position right here okay let's do some windscreen wipers now and we're doing this exercise super slowly so please don't go wiping like like that, but go slowly so that you can feel the shift in weight. Now I feel the weight coming onto my little finger more. I'm carrying it as it were. I'm pivoting on my thumb where my pivot is, you see, and now I'm going slowly. Let it go over the top. And let's see if you can feel the weight and become aware of the weight that you're carrying now with your index finger like that. We'll go over the top again. See if you can carry that weight again with your pinky right here. So do that a few more times so that you start to feel the shift in balance on the bow. If you're not feeling it today, that's absolutely fine. Try it again tomorrow and you may suddenly become aware of something changing. Today, let's hold the bow upright and let's add another bow exercise to our repertoire. And I'm going to very slowly crawl up with my fingers. I'm going to let the bow slide. And I'm going to go to the point of the bow. There we are. You can touch this, the point of your bow. Step by step, see if you can get back. Give it its time, because this is more difficult than the other way around. And step by step, we're going to go to the heel of the bow. Now, what this promotes when you play the violin, it promotes letting your fingers work together. It also strengthens your fingers. So you're training the fingers of your bow hand. Now, when you arrive at the heel of the bow again, the heel or the frog is this end of your bow. See if you can find that nice bow hold again that you had. So let's check over to see if your middle finger and your thumb are still across from one another. If you've got your fingers correctly spaced out, so your middle two fingers together with a finger width gap and a finger width gap there. And let's also check that your little finger is on that side edge. So your little finger is not over 
and neither is it on the top, but it's leaning against the bow almost from the side. Now that is a very, very lovely bow hold. So let's pick up your violin now and we'll do some playing. So let's double check your shoulder rest. Is it on like a smiley face? Lovely. Now you may remember that this button here went into that little dent in your neck here and you were going to slide it up on the side so that you have your violin at about a 45 degree angle. You may also remember that we were thinking about this angle here that your scroll of your violin is slightly higher than this end of your violin here where your chin rest is. And we were also talking in lesson one about this angle so your, your violin is a little bit slanted to the right hand side. Let's think about your neck now because this thing here is called the, the chin rest but your chin shouldn't actually be on the chin rest like that. No, it should be this corner of your jaw. Okay, so that goes on to the chin rest. So I'm always saying to my pupils, do a little bit of yes and also a little bit of no and then you should be just right holding the violin like this. If you have got a super long neck, you might want to raise the shoulder rest a little bit so it fills up this gap between your collarbone and your jaw so that your violin fits in there snugly. So neither should you have to reach over the top to be able to grab it with your jaw and nor should you have to put your head down quite a lot to hold it like that. Now let's have a go at trying this new thing today. Once you've got the corner of your jaw on your chin rest like that, could you hold it ever so briefly just with your neck? If you can do that, that's absolutely awesome. Let's try that again. Wonderful, really good. So we're trying to get into a position where we're strengthening the muscles at the back of our neck here by just trying that. And you'll find that over the next coming days, you can hold this for a little bit longer and your neck will get stronger. So we're starting this off quite early so that by the time you learn to play your left hand fingers on the violin, you have a balance between holding the violin with your hand and holding the violin with your neck. So we're starting making your neck muscles stronger right from this moment on. So try to practice this a few times every day so that you already get used to that idea. Wonderful. Now let's pick up our bow. You can still hold your violin here with your left hand. See if you can find that nice bow hold again that you had a moment ago. And let's go onto the G string now. And I'm hoping that you know which of your strings is the G string. Just think about that for a moment while I'll tell you the answer in a second. Okay, the G string is the string furthest to your left here. And let's see if we can do four bow strokes, making your bow as long as you possibly can. Here we go. Lovely job. Now when we start at the heel of the bow and we play towards the point, the direction of your bowing is called a down bow. So you'll find that word down bow in your book. And this is what it means. Down bow starts at the heel of the bow and plays into this direction. Any down bow that starts here and goes into that direction, so for instance this one as well, or when you start in the middle and you go towards the point, they are all down bows. And in music, and we'll come to read music very shortly, it's indicated with a little square bracket. You can find it in your book, but it reflects the outline of the frog here. That's where it comes from. This is also how you can remember it. Now, when we play in the opposite direction, so we start at the point of the bow, or we can start in the middle of the bow, or we can start near the heel, but if we play from the point towards the heel, 
that is called an up bow. It's easier to see how this is called up bow if you play it on the E string. Because your bow goes up, you see. And in your music, this up bow will be indicated by a little V sign. You can find the sign in your book. And that is the outline of the point of the bow. But not only bow strokes that start at a point and go in this direction are called up bows. Also, up bows that start in the middle and go in that same direction, that's also called an up bow. And this is also called an up bow. You see, so up bow and down bow is more about the direction of the bow than the starting point of your bow stroke. Now let's play on the D string now. And we're going to start at the heel of the bow, down bow, and we're going to try and play long bows. Make sure you stand really, really tall when you do that. Wow, that's nice. And you are already progressing from lesson one. I think you can hear the difference in sound that you make. Awesome, really good. Let's go on the A string now. And again, we're starting at the heel of the bow. And that is our default mode of playing. Whenever we start a new bow stroke, we're starting down bow at the heel if nothing else is indicated. Here we go on the A string. <laughs> play four long bows on the E string as well. Lovely job. And I'm thinking that you can play bow strokes now that are much longer than how you initially started. When you first started, you may have been able to play with shorter bows, then you made them a little bit longer. And I'm hoping that now you can play full bows. Sweet, well done. You can perhaps see now why there is this dent in your violin here. Because when we play on the E string, your angle of your bow on your string should be quite sharp, shall we say, quite upright, so that you can imagine if your violin had a sort of curved shape without this indent here, you, you would not have been able to play so steeply with your bow, you see. So that's why there is this indent in the shape of the violin. Now let's place your bow on the E string in the middle and let's see what angle we create. If I want you to look here. If you are quite close to that indentation with your bow, Okay, and let's now go to the G string without moving your bow off the string and let's see what happens. So we're in the middle of the bow and you can probably tell that I've now hit the other curve right here. I've not quite hit it, okay, but I'm going to go and hover quite close to this indent here. So we need those two indents to be able to play with the bow on the strings. Now we're going to go back to the E string now um, and find that angle again on the E string and I want you to focus on the level of your right elbow now. Look at this. Can you see? My elbow's gone down and I can play on the E string and I'm just, just hovering free from the indent on your violin there. Now let's lift your elbow up again so that you go to the G string and now down again to the E string. And you can see that my elbow levels, my right elbow, determine on which string I'm playing. After this lesson, you may have a look in your book on page six, and you can see how your string levels are different. And I call them string levels. I could also call them elbow levels. And I want you to gradually become aware that when you play on the G string, your right elbow is higher compared with when you play on the E string. 
And you may remember that in an earlier lesson we were saying you mean to play only one string at a time, but it sometimes happens that accidental sounds creep into your music. When you're first learning to play the violin, it's more difficult to gauge that elbow level that guides your bow across the strings. But as you become more aware of what happens when you play on each individual string, I think it will be easier to eliminate those extra sounds that you don't really mean to play but that accidentally creep in into your music. Let's do an extra exercise to find these elbow levels. And I want you just to put down your violin and your bow. Now when we lift our elbow up here on the right hand side to indicate, to find a level of your elbow for the different string levels, I want you to become aware that you don't need to lift your shoulders up to lift your elbows up. So let's do this, what I call chicken wing exercise. That's an exercise that I've invented. I call it a silly name like that. Let's first draw our shoulders up to our ears and then drop them down. Can you do that again? Lift your shoulders up. Now drop them down into their lowest position. So stand up really tall when you do that. And now, can you lift up both elbows, but leave your shoulders down? So let's drop your elbows down, leave your shoulders down all the time. Elbows up, elbows down, elbows up, elbows down. And now, let's lift your shoulders up with your elbows. And you get this. And now drop everything down, okay? Let's do that again. Lift your shoulders and your elbows up at the same time and drop it all down. And this time let's leave your shoulders in place. So leave your shoulders down while you just lift up your elbows. And now you become aware that those two are independent things, isn't it? Your shoulders can stay down while you lift your elbow up. Now let's feel how that feels on your violin. So let's pick up your violin and your bow again. And I'm going to put my violin on my shoulder again. I'm holding my left hand here. I'm finding my nice bow hold. So take your time to sort out your bow hold. That's okay. And let's put your bow in the middle on the E string. Have you got that? And now you find that your elbow is in its lowest position and hopefully your shoulder, your right shoulder is also in its lowest position, isn't it? Now very slowly, can you lift your right elbow up but leave your shoulder down so that your bow goes to the G string. Now drop your elbow down again. Feel how your right shoulder is still in its lowest position. And then we'll do it again. Very slowly lift up your right elbow. Careful you don't raise your shoulder at the same time. So your right shoulder stays down. It's just your elbow that you lift up. And we'll go all the way and find your string level for the G string. And you might take a look here so that you're just free from the violin. You're not going all the way so that you can't, you can't, you, you bow on the inside of your violin here. And we're just finding out those levels. And practicing those levels will be very useful, as I said. Leave your shoulder in its lowest position and drop it all down. And this way, when you practice that, you become aware of where all your muscles are. Is my shoulder in my lowest position? And then I want to find out where my elbow level is. Now, with that knowledge, we're going to play four long bows again. And we're going to start on the E string this time. So we're going to get down bow. We're starting at the heel of the bow. So you learn a lot of vocabulary at the same time today. Okay, when you're ready, long down bow. Try to reach the point of the bow. Now, if you find it difficult to reach the point of the bow, it may be that your hand has gone sideways like that. And where you're aiming to play is straight in front with your hand. So this, this is a very strange thing about violin playing. We always think that violin bowing is like this, isn't it? But actually, it is like this. 
So if you can't reach the point of the bow, see if you may have gone this way. Okay? And you can see that the bow is slipping across the fingerboard, which is this black thing here. So reach in front a little bit more if that happens to you. Okay. Now that I've reached the point of the bow, can you see that my hand here is straight in front of my tummy? And this way I can reach the point of the bow. So wherever you are at this moment, we'll meet at the point of the bow. And now we'll play an up bow again. And a down bow. And an up bow. Gorgeous. Now we rest our bow on the string. And our next step is that we're going to alter our right elbow. We're going to lift it up slightly. And now I want you to look here at the contact point. This is called the contact point where the bow is in contact with the string. So I'm lifting up very, very gently all the way until I've reached the G string. And you may look where your contact point is here on the G string. And now we're going to straighten our bow stroke again. Play a down bow. Pushing your bow arm forwards, all the way forwards, until you've reached the point. And again, you might be able to see that my arm is here, and it's not somewhere there. If that's you, do it again and see if you can reach forward. That feels very odd, I have to admit that. I can clearly remember my first day as a violin player. I find this really, really strange to bow forward. Okay, so... I'll meet you at the end of the bow stroke here. Wonderful. And now I want you to check that your shoulder is in its lowest position before you go up bow. again so that we find our E string string level and then we'll do it again four long bow strokes pushing your bow arm forward awesome now some people might say to me whenever I get to about halfway my bow starts to bounce and that is a good thing that it bounces a bow is made to bounce and what is making it bounce at the moment is there might be tension in your upper arm somewhere if you tense your upper arm the bow will do as it's meant to do namely start to bounce we don't want that so what you might do to cure that is to stop whenever you feel the bounce coming on stop the bow Consciously try to relax your upper arm if you can, and then continue your bowing. Some people shake more than others, and it's just being unfamiliar with this technique. It's okay, in 9 times out of 10, it will go within a couple of weeks once you learn to relax the upper arm. And some people can do that more easily than others, because some people are very flexible and naturally more relaxed in their muscle tone than other people who are very, very tense in their muscle tone. So these more tense people, and I'm one of them, so don't despair if it's you, uh, these more ten naturally tense people will have to learn to relax more consciously. But you'll get there. It takes time. Violin playing, I've said it already, this is only lesson three. I've said it a couple of times already. Violin playing is not something that you do in a day. But you'll get there. It is very much a process. And in, in two weeks you, you think nothing of it anymore. But today it might seem very, very tense. Well, that's okay. We're here to learn and we're not after perfection, as I've said before. So give it your best shot and you'll be fine. Now, I want you to practice these string levels on all four strings. And I want you to gauge with your right elbow which string level is which elbow level and you gradually get used to that and learn to feel where your elbow is. 
So take your time when you practice that. Always aiming to stretch your bow arm forwards. And that will make for a very, very good bowing technique right from the word go. So I can congratulate you today on having made another big, big step of progress. Well done. Keep going over this video and practice it with me as many times as you like. In the meantime, perhaps you can write about your experience. How did this work for you? In the comments section down below this video, it will be really nice to get a real community of players going in this course where you can share experiences where one person says, oh, I was really shaking like mats today. And another person might say, oh, me too. And it's really nice to read for other people as well how you got on with this lesson. So please make use of that opportunity. And then in the meantime, I hope you really enjoy the sounds that you make. And I very much look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.